Reverend Dr. Robert Brzezinski, it's such a pleasure to be with you and your community here today. I have been looking forward to this with great anticipation. As some of you may be aware, uh, Reverend Barbara and I first were introduced to each other over a year ago now. And in that time, we've had so many wonderful adventures online sharing in different ways and sharing the science of mind philosophy. Uh, and we have uh, we were scheduled to have an opportunity to take a deep dive in person together recently. But as you'll hear today uh, through my talk, it, that became part of the divine discontent. Now, for those that are familiar, Centers for Spiritual Living, we have an annual theme this year. It is a grand rising. And I'm going to tell you, I personally experienced a grand rising over the past couple of weeks. However, in the month of December, we also chose divine discontent as the monthly theme. And you'll hear that uh, both I and Reverend Barbara experienced that as well. So if you're not aware of what I'm uh, hinting about, uh, both Reverend Barbara and I were part of a group of people uh, that traveled to Nairobi to visit with the Center for Spiritual Living Kenya over the past two weeks. And yes, we both did take ill during the trip. The, me being here today uh, was scheduled as an opportunity to share with you a little bit more about our adventures, and I do, uh, I am going to do that here in the next 20 minutes or so. So again, I want to thank you for being with us. I want to thank everybody that's part of the Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake for uh, supporting the important work that you are doing and that is happening around the world with a grand rising of the science of mind, philosophy, faith, and way of life. If you're watching this on a rebroadcast or a replay or at another time, uh, thank you for taking and investing your time uh, to watch this. For those that are here live, uh, feel free to use that chat box and let us know as we go along how everything's working for you and uh, any questions you might have as we go along as well. All right. So today's talk title, One Spirit, One World, One People. Now, I want to be very clear. I, I have borrowed that from the Center for Spiritual Living Kenya because that is their vision statement. One Spirit, One World, One People. New Thought Media Network, as I am the spiritual leader, uh, our uh, one of our one of the pieces of our statements, our vision is a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and to entertainment. And I've been really clear over the last few years uh, that as an organization, New Thought Media Network, part of what we're here to do is to support the natural uprising of the science of mind philosophy and new thought as a whole wherever we may see it in the world and wherever uh, wherever in the world it's happening. And what I want you to know is the science of mind is expanding more and more and more all the time into a global philosophy. Uh, just a few years back, we were inducted into the Parliament of World's Religions. And according to that organization, we are considered a world religion, that is new thought as a whole. Uh, for those that may remember, the New Thought encompasses not just the Centers for Spiritual Living, but it also includes the Unity uh, Spiritual Centers across Canada and North America and the planet, as well as Divine Science uh, International and a number of uh, growing communities, organizations such as the Agape International Spiritual Center, the Universal Foundation for Better Living, Hillside Church, and other organizations as well. Through it all, this grand rising is making itself known in amazing ways. And over the last few years, this ministry has afforded me a trip to Switzerland and to experience a, a, an uprising of science of mind there. Uh, also to Chapala, Mexico, uh, where there is an annual conference of the Americas that happens in August 
And that uh, is a great expression uh, and a great experience. I learned so much Spanish that week, uh, and I learned so much about the science of mind as well. And as we're here to talk about today, this grand uprising of the Centers for Spiritual Living in Kenya. Now, during our travels, the uh, experience was broken into four portions. Uh, the first few days, we're getting to know Nairobi and getting to know the culture, Getting uh, and we stayed at the Maasai Lodge. The second section was uh, the conference itself, uh, held at a very wonderful conference center. And unfortunately, that is where Reverend Barbara and I both in our uh, fell ill to different different versions of whatever it is that was going around. So a lot of what you'll hear today relies on my dear wife, professional practitioner, Lara Brzezinski. Uh, she was unaffected by anything there uh, and was able to uh, attend all of the conference itself. Following the conference, uh, we went on a three-day safari. And if you've ever had the experience you know how amazing it is. If you haven't, we're going to encourage you uh, to do so at some point. And then uh, Reverend Barbara and I were both scheduled to return to the state, uh, to North America. Sorry, I forget it. You're in Canada sometimes. Uh, we returned to the States and Canada. Uh, and uh, there was a fourth section to the trip that continued on to experience even more of how this philosophy, the science of mind, is supporting people. That's the important part to us. We want to make sure that this grand philosophy, this grand uprising, is not a colonization. We want, and Reverend Barbara and I have spoken together about this at length. We want to ensure that the expansion of this philosophy and faith is able to support people in living the life they already live. Not to have to do it the way we do it, not to have to have church the way we do it. And as you'll hear, that's not what's happening in, in Kenya. They're, they're, not, they're creating an, a unique way of acknowledging and experiencing the philosophy, but also the community and that, sense of, that deeper sense of community. Now, the Centers for Spiritual Living Kenya was started uh, by Reverend Connie Phelps. Reverend Connie is no longer with us. She made her earthly transition in 2020. Uh, however, before that happened, she was able to host the very first conference, which was called 2020 Vision in Kenya. This conference it was uh, in many ways a memorial and a celebration of her work there as the work has been continued, not only by locals in, the, in Kenya itself, uh, but by ministers from around the globe. And currently, Reverend uh, Barb and Reverend Gwen uh, are, the, uh, are the spiritual leaders of CSL Kenya. So you may hear us mention them a little bit as we go along today as well. So the journey begins with the idea of exploring how does this philosophy serve the people? And what I've learned is uh, from the very beginning, the science of mind was rising up in Kenya before there was even a ministry, before there was a center. Through a number of different now practitioners and ministerial students, uh, people had discovered the work of Ernest Holmes and discovered the work of the science of mind. And we're beginning to to immerse themselves in that, to share that with their neighbors, and then to live that. I think one of the greatest expressions of this is the Brighton School. Now, we were invited and we did visit uh, what is known as the second largest slum in, uh, in Kenya. And if you hear the word slum, from, I, I know I had never visited a true slum, I, I have visited some rather rough neighborhoods in some major cities across North America and what many might call the projects. However, when you visit a slum in Nairobi, you come to realize this is a whole different animal. Between the open sewers, between streets that were paved literally 
with garbage, with plastic bottles and plastic waste and waste of all types, we were uh, we were safely transported into the heart of the second largest slum in Nairobi, where we then had to walk from the safety of our bus through the streets and through the alleyways to a place known as the Brighton School. The Brighton School is run by a husband and wife team that are steeped in the philosophy. And Wilkester is her name. She is the headmistress. Uh, her husband, Jeffrey, is the director of this school. They currently serve and support over 300 students that would have no exposure whatsoever to the science of mind, let alone an opportunity to attend school. Attending school in the slums of Nairobi is truly, uh, as much as we could call it, a luxury. It's something that helps get children out of these schools. And so the Brighton School houses over 300, or, excuse me, supports over 300 students in getting their primary education. Due to the rules and regulations in Nairobi and Kenya, uh, they're only able to teach students up through the seventh grade. However, they provide them with uniforms. They provide them with a safe space. Often the spaces that are called home are not safe for the younger generation in Nairobi. And this school provides a safe space, plus they provide meals. And that is quite unusual for a school, uh, specifically in the slums. Now, a lot of students in, in Kenya are uh, do attend a boarding schools once they get old enough to go to high school. And the, they themselves support a number of high school students that have left the slum and are attending high school uh, high schools in and around the city. Uh, the school also currently houses full time five different teenage boys who uh, would have nowhere to be, and they live on the property. I hesitate. I wouldn't want to call this a campus for sure, uh, as it is really. When we visited the school, it is a collection of tin roof shanties connected together and protected by a wall uh, that keeps intruders out. They have in the past uh, been victims of, uh, of, of, um, of robberies and uh, such. And uh, over time, however, they've been able to forge alliances. And by having you know, these teenage boys sleep on the property, uh, they are able to help protect the property. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time to put together a proper slideshow for you. And uh, however, please know the media does exist and that is already in the works. And we will uh, make sure you get a chance to experience this a bit more. One of the projects of the Brighton School in the future that I know will be involved in is helping them to build a stone walled room, which would ha house a laboratory. Uh, that laboratory would be vital to help in continuing education and bring students forward uh, into the high school years and being able to offer high school level classes. Currently, there is one young man that has uh, come up through the ranks, as it were. He started at a very young age with the Brighton School in their earliest years. He's made it through his primary education and has completed his secondary education with their support. He's currently at college, attending university, with the intention to complete a medical degree. And his greater intention is to come back to the slums and serve and support the community that brought him up. What a great story. And this is not the science of mind being taught directly as this is how it happens. They use the science of mind philosophy as the basis for all of their curriculum and, uh, and, and the, 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 what they're teaching, how they're teaching these kids to show up in the world. It's really inspirational. It's much more than I understood was happening. And, it, and it's a great, it's a great honor to be able to see what's happening there. Also inside, uh, in and around the Nairobi area, uh, Center for Spiritual Living Kenya is able to support a group called SMILE, a program called SMILE. Now, SMILE stands for See My Inside Life Everywhere. 
Think about that. Are you ready to see your inside life? Are you ready to see uh, an outpicturing of your beliefs everywhere you go? That is the opportunity that is before all of us here whether you call yourself, whether you're attending, whether you're a minister or a practitioner, wherever you might be on your spiritual journey, uh, we do get that opportunity day by day. And I'm going to invite each of us to take that and make it turn what we see as our inside life into a commitment to make that how we see ourselves living in the outside life as well. Now, the smile uh, in Kenya is a, 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 a teacher, a practitioner, someone who, who has learned this philosophy over the years now and is teaching family groups. They've split into two groups, a group of about 12 or 13 and another group of 15 to 17. And the practitioner moves about the country. It's an hour and a half drive from where he lives to, to where these family groups are located. Uh, and he does weekly classes uh, with these groups. Uh, is, again, about two hour drive actually from the center of Nairobi. They are able to provide resources and supplies to help these family groups learn how to use the science of mind cr across the generations. I didn't get to visit with these folks. However, uh, they were able to present at the conference. And my wife said it was very, very inspiring. Currently, the Center for Spiritual Living Kenya has nine licensed professional practitioners and three ministerial students. So we know uh, that the work of Ernest Holmes is being shared and being uh, inspi is inspiring new generations uh, on the far side of the planet, as it were. Another great opportunity that we got to experience, uh, again, unfortunately, Reverend Barber and I were not. However, we've seen some of the videos, and my wife has been able to share much of that with us. Uh, one of their practitioners, a gentleman named Paul, uh, began a, basically what I would call a retreat space. Uh, now, it doesn't have overnight facilities or lodging facilities, uh, but they have created a safe gathering place to celebrate. And CSL Kenya is able to use this space regularly for their community celebrations as, as well. It's a little farther out into the countryside uh, than where the offices are. Uh, in closer to the city of Nairobi. And so the gathering space has become more of a special location and a sacred location where they travel as a community and as a group to have special events and, uh, and organizations there. Uh, the, the office itself has also turned into a hub of social activity in and around their local community. Uh, while CSL Kenya is predominantly a virtual center and they hold virtual services, uh, those virtual services are facilitated by the office, which has also become a rather large library of New Thought resources. Throughout it all, I personally was highly inspired by what we got to experience. And yes, we hired local guides to facilitate the safari experience. And we were able to stay with uh, local Maasai tribe, tribal members uh, throughout our stay. And what I have learned is each of the various vendors that was chosen by CSL Kenya is connected to the teachings. Each of these people is operating their business in accordance with local laws and regulations and, and stipulations. However, there is an undergirding of what they're learning about the oneness that we all are. Remember the phrase, one spirit, one world, one people. And if we look at that, that fits into the science of mind teaching symbol quite well. One spirit in that top third, that which is inspiring all, and then that one world, that filter, that space where the, where the philosophy individualizes itself as my life, as your life. In that bottom part, we become the plant. We become the demonstration as one people. I have a phrase that I like to use. Deeply 
we are one. Deeply, we are one. And in my travels this past week, I came to see a, a greater expression of that. Not because people were taught that's what they should say. Not because people were taught that's what we're all about. Because that is what they naturally felt. From the, from the native from the native greetings of Jumbo to the welcoming of the people and their language and in, in when in a traditional Maasai village, when you are welcomed into the village, they the elders would say supa as a way of welcoming. And the response is empa as a way of saying thank you. The experiences of gratitude that we were met with throughout our travels, wherever it might be, from the hotel keepers to the shopkeepers, from those that were hawking their wares on the side of the road, to the Maasai women that uh, might seem a little aggressive in their sales tactics, what we were met with was a deep sense of love and connection. While we were there, we got to see the Great Rift Valley. Now, this might be reaching back in our history lessons a little bit. However, many consider the Great Rift Valley as the place of where humanity was born, where the place that, that humanity became human. And it is many for many been said that this is where humanity migrated out of Africa and into the other continents and across land bridges to populate all of our planet. To stand on the mountainside and look down upon the birthplace of humanity, more than awe-inspiring, it's transformative. To then venture to, into the heart of that valley and seeing countless species of animals living in harmony, the lions and the hyenas, the pumba, the giraffe. We learned the big five of the African animals, and I'll, I'll give you the opportunity to do that research on your own. From the smallest of birds to a plethora of four-legged furry creatures, Thompson gazelle, other forms of antelope. Humanity was expressing itself as oneness. And you could sense it in every turn, every bump of the road, every instruction of our guides. You could sense the oneness that we all are. As any good story, eventually the ending must come. And the travels home... And the challenges that might present at the center of it, people were people. And while security guards and others had jobs to do and we might not always understand or agree, we came to respect that the people of Kenya, the people of Africa, the people of planet Earth, at the very center of our being, we get it. Deeply, we are one. Deeply, we are working together to create a, a more expansive way, a grander uprising. And that is what I see happening in Kenya, a grand uprising. Yes, we had our discontents, long bus rides, bumpy roads, illnesses that put some of our party to bed for days. And I know that our dear Barbara perhaps had the, mo the, the roughest trip of them all. She took sick earlier than uh, those uh, uh, others and remained so throughout the trip. 
And I know that when I have that chance to speak with her and we have that chance to share, I know that she'll be sharing the good stuff, the inspiration, the reminders of our oneness, more so than that which kept us apart. Folks, I believe the science of mind is experiencing a grand uprising. And not just here in North America. It's rising up all across South America. It's rising up all across Central America. It's rising up in Kenya. And there is now even word of a conference being born in Johannesburg, South Africa, with potential uh, potential dates in August or September of 2025. We see the science of mind in a grand uprising across Europe and England and a resurgence happening across that continent as well. I am confident the day will come when the two different communities of the science of mind in the Ukraine are able to once again host guests and visitors I have this sense of, I will see the day when new thought rises up in China and perhaps India as well. And we know of works that have begun in India, not under the banner of Centers for Spiritual Living, not under the banner of new thought, but sharing the philosophy of oneness. Deeply, we are one. And so my call to you today is a call to support this grand uprising. Now, as our title says, one spirit, one world, one people, I'm going to invite you to reverse that and look at how you, you individually, can support the uprising of new thought in one person in your community. One person that you can introduce to CSL on the lake. One person that you can share this philosophy with. Because what I know is is each one of us shares with one friend. Well, there's an old commercial from when I was a child. That if you two tell two friends and they tell two friends and they tell two friends. Deeply we are one. And I invite you this week to tell someone about that. We don't need to shove it down their throat. We don't need to colonize those around us to our belief. We just need to share that we are one people living here on Turtle Island, creating a world that works for all, expressing that one spirit in a way that makes what we do oh so attractive and what I know is more and more will be lifted, inspired by this philosophy, this deep faith that we each hold and together we create a way of life, a way of life that works for all, for all life. If you're with me, I invite you to join me in prayer as we step into a place of knowing hmm, that there is only one. One power, one presence, one infinite intelligence that is moving and breathing and having its being as all of life. One self-existing cause that is right now taking on form, fully aware that it shall one day abandon that form in order to take on new form. One love, one life. And what I know is I know that one reveals itself perfectly as my life. Whole, complete, nothing missing, nothing absent. And as it expresses itself as my life, I know it must be expressing itself as all life, as the lives of each and every one in this room right now, each and every one watching this at another time, perhaps those watching from another dimension. 
I know the oneness reveals itself as all of life, so I know each one here must be on a sacred mission, must be on a sacred mission to reveal a, a, a collection, a, a group of gifts and skills and talents in a way that no one else can. See, we are each unique beings bringing who we are to this thing called life, bringing the divine through us into this thing called life. So we each bring a unique set of gifts and skills and talents. I know this world would be a much, much lesser place without you, without what you bring to this world. An idea, a spark, a vision, a perception, a way of saying yes to the divine. And what I know is the divine is saying yes right back. As I look at all the various ways that this science of mind is rising up across the planet, I am inspired. Inspired by the great works, inspired by the amazing opportunities before us to serve, to support, to love, to laugh, to cry together, to heal together. And whether that healing takes form in the physical world or whether it's part of our mental world or maybe it's part of our emotional life, maybe it's part of our spiritual life, the healing is constantly revealing itself as a new way of being, a new experience, a new opportunity. So I invite each one that may hear these words to simply say yes. Yes to that deeper inner calling. Yes to that deeper inner experience of giving and loving and sharing and simply being. Being an expression of the divine. I claim for each one that hears these words a deep sense of that grand rising within themselves. A grand rising of truth and a grand commitment to serve the evolution of humanity's journey of enlightenment. A commitment to be love in the world. A commitment to serve and to give and to receive. Deeply, deeply we are one. And so I celebrate that this day. I invite you to join me in that celebration, that in celebration of our oneness. It's from this place that I release this word into the universal law, that law that must demonstrate, that law that cannot return this word void, that law that must take this prayer and make it so. We, with a grateful heart, release this prayer into that law and let it be getting my divine nothingness out of the circuits. I let go, I let it be, I let God be God. And if any word of this has resonated in any way, I invite you to join me in an affirmation of truth as we say together, and so it is. And so, and so, and so it is. Thank you so much, dear ones, for having me today. Thank you so much for being a part of what's happening here in the world of the Centers for Spiritual Living and for being a part of the greater movement of new thought across planet Earth. Until next time, namaste.